The story begins in the central district of Liaoning province. Liaoning is a coastal province in northeast China. Farming started flourishing from there but as it was located far in the frontier, the culturally backward people had a strange sense of inferiority among themselves. However, due to their rough temperament, in every conflict they got involved, none of the factions underestimated the Liaoning province. The ground of Musin in Liaoning province was the place where Goryeo and the central district engaged in fierce battles. Then the bronze black dragon statue appeared. In honor of the fierce battles, there in Hyolu Pyong, the magnificence of the bronze black dragon creeps into the atmosphere. In Liaoning province Musin, a stage in an open field surrounded by people are visible. And up in the mountain was the bronze black dragon. And there in Hyolu Pyong, Dei Ryuk Bu, and Yang Son Jang. In order to gain supremacy in the north, these two factions, through their own representatives, duped it out with their strength in front of the residents of Musin. Standing in front of each other, Dei Ryuk Bu started the conversation and said that it's been a while, and he called him Master Chul. Then Yang Son Jang told him that he was looking good, and he was calling him Master Man. He also told Dei Ryuk Bu that Mo Yangse opened the Gabong Gate more than ten years ago. The leader's position as Liaoning has been vacant for too long now. In addition to what he said, today, he, the Ten Thousand Sword will take the supremacy of Liaoning province by using Dei Ryuk Bu as his stepping stone. However, Yang Son Jiang's leader and the attributes of Chul Ho Sim were Ten Thousand Swords. Then the leader of Dei Ryuk Bu was the dance of the strong wind and the attributes of Man Juk Sang. He asked Yang Son Jiang if they needed to exchange this many words. According to him, in the past, the central district and Goryeo fought their blood-curling battles, and immeasurable blood and tears were shed, and now he will litter the same Hyolu Pyong's ground with the blood of Yang Son Jiang. At this point, the people around them were cheering for Dei Ryuk Bu. Then there was an old man who was drinking and watching over them. He said that the old beggar is living a luxurious life now. According to him, they say that the leaders of Dei Ryuk Bu and Yang Son Jiang are the best in the region. But as this old man stated, they are certainly living up to their reputation. It is worthwhile to have run a thousand miles in order to get there after hearing that those two are getting down to business. All of a sudden, the swords of the two leaders collide, and the old man says that Master Man's matchless force. And Master Chul's dragon sword. At that moment, he was shocked while looking at them and he was confused about who was the one that will come out on top. However, this old man was the public elder, Iron Man, Hong Mu Gyu. According to him, there is nothing more entertaining than watching others fight. And he will record the result of the fight in their public data. All of a sudden, a mysterious man appeared out of nowhere. Then Hong Mu Gyu was shocked at that moment. Instantaneously, he stood up and looked at the guy near the bronze black dragon statue. This man was looking at him and according to Hong Mu Gyu, he was hooked on how the fight was going, still, he took pride in himself as a strong, observant man, but he never noticed how near this man came till now. Suddenly, he was shocked and confused about what it was, and why he was feeling so uneasy right now. At the same time, he was curious if he was going senile. At this point, these two leaders were both enraged. They clash their sword and keep fighting. Then, this mysterious man was curious and said that the forces of the central district between the two. All of a sudden, his eyes became blue and according to him, he could have enjoyed this if it was under normal circumstances. Suddenly he accidentally tapped the bronze black dragon statue. Then he felt pain at that moment. He cursed and clenched his hand. Then he gritted his teeth and he wished that he had a little more time. All of a sudden, the bronze black dragon statue glowed blue. And he thought about his little daughter. This old man was confused if this was the time he had left. Hong Mu Gyu was shocked and according to him, it was serenity. The intense serenity he was feeling now from him. If he was a human, it would be a given that he would have some vigor in him. But that person seemed like he did not have any substance from the start. Before leaving this mysterious old man told Hong Mu Gyu that his descendant would come. Then he jumped off using his blue powerful force. Hong Mu Gyu was left confused about what the mysterious old man meant in his last words about the descendant. All of a sudden, Hong Mu Gyu was shocked and puzzled when he heard a crackle as he looked back. Then the dragon statue is surrounded by a blue power. And it started transforming into a circle. 
Hong Miu Gyu was shocked and his eyes widened. According to him, that mysterious old man just touched that with his hand, and he couldn't believe how it that possible in the world there exists a force like that. He was confused about what if that force was aimed towards a human. Then he thought that the descendant that the mysterious old man meant was a human. Meanwhile, at Goryeo, the game of Plateau Nandrim Mountains, we can see a big tree at the edge of the cliff. Then someone spoke and complimented how good as the day and the wind was nice too. Suddenly, a man with blue hair casually leading with his arm behind his head as a pillow of one branch of a tree. This man was Dan Sa Yu the main protagonist of our story. At this moment, he was startled and puzzled. Then suddenly, a lady called him and asked if he was up the three again. She told Dan Sa Yu that he was still climbing there even though she already told him how dangerous it could be. However, Dan Sa Yu called her Nuna, which means an older sister, and he asked her if she wanted to come up too. This lady was Gung Mu A. She told Dan Sa Yu that she could not climb high places like those and she added that he was probably the only one in their village who could climb that tree. Then Dan Sa Yu encouraged her that he really thinks she will like the view of the sky from there, and it's awesome how it looks from there. But his sister told him that she was fine so he must come down. Then he informed Dan Sa Yu that Juk San should be coming now, and they needed to head toward her house. Nonetheless, Gung Yue was holding a basket that was full of vegetables and she told Dan Sa Yu that they would have lunch together. Then Dan Sa Yu just smirked and he was just speechless at that moment. All of a sudden, Dan Sa Yu quickly jumped off from the tree. Then he landed beside his older sister. But Gung Yue was mad and she asked him if he really wanted to injure himself by jumping like that. Nevertheless, Dan Sa Yu told her that he didn't care, and she's gonna be the one to take care of his injuries anyway. Meanwhile, at Nandran Mountain Gung Village, these two were heading to their village at that moment. Then Gung Mu A told Dan Sa Yu that he was old enough to be mature by now, but it seems like that's still far away. However, while they were walking in the village, some villagers were talking about Dan Sa Yu and someone asked why is that Dan boy was there again. Then, the other villagers said that he was really shameless. He doesn't know why he is living there in their Gung Village when he is from the Dan clan. Upon hearing that, Dan Sa Yu was just stunned and he told his sister that those people are something. Then Dan Sa Yu asked if they weren't getting tired of bad mouthing him whenever he came there. But his sister just said sorry to him and told him that they just go home quickly. All of a sudden, they were both shocked when Gung Su Dok was in front and asked Gung Yu A if she was hanging out with that Dan boy again. Gung Su Dok added and told her that she was already in her marriageable age. The fact that she still hasn't gotten herself a husband is because she keeps hanging out with that outsider. Suddenly, Dan Sa Yu just smiled and told him to speak for himself. He couldn't even poop and pee by himself until he was eight years old. Then he asked him if shouldn't he start taking care of himself more if he wanted to get married. But all of a sudden, Gung Su Dok grasped his shirt and he called him bastard. Then he asked him what did he say and if he wanted to meet his father in the afterlife. At that moment, Dan Sa Yu was just shocked and his eyes widened. Gung Su Dok added and told Dan Sa Yu that he heard that his father was a deserter. How dare a deserter's kid talk to him like that? He reminded Dan Sa Yu that he was older than him by one year, instead of calling him Hung Nim, which means older brother, and he asked Dan Sa Yu what he said just now. All of a sudden, a shadow of a man appeared behind him and called him Gung Su Dok Hung Nim. Gung Su Dok was shocked and his reaction was just like he heard a ghost. Instantaneously, the big man grabbed the neck part of his collar just like a kid. Then Gung Su Dok looked at the big man and he was shocked that it was Juk San, and he was telling him to let him go. But Juk San told him that he was blocking the narrow path, so he couldn't pass at all, and he was telling him to please move it. Then Gung Mu A was shocked and she told Juk San to put him down quickly and he couldn't use force. Instantaneously, Juk San followed her and he let go of Gung Su Dok at that moment. Then Dan Sa Yu and Gung Mu A were both shocked upon seeing it. Unfortunately, Gung Su Dok was thrown away, and he was hid in the wood. At this point, he was mad and he just gritted his teeth. All of a sudden, this old woman shouted and she called Juk San and told him brat. Gung Juk San was shocked when he saw the village chief. Then he told her that he was glad he met him there, and he had something for him. 
But the old woman was mad and told him that he beat up their Su Doc just to save that Dan boy's ass. And she asked him if he was a gung or a Dan. In an instant, the old lady was startled when Su Doc gave something to her and told her that it seemed this news was very important, so he said to give it to her straight away. Then Su Doc immediately put his arm around the old lady and she asked Su Doc what news it was. Nonetheless, Juk San told her that he was going off then. This old woman was just stunned at that moment, and Dan Sa Yu was just speechless. At this point, this old woman was asking Juk San if he didn't look at the news. But Su Doc told her that Juk San already left. This old woman was enraged. Then she was raising his wooden stick while telling him that if Juk San kept acting up like that because of the Dan boy, she was going to kick him out of the Gung clan. However, someone told her to calm down. At this point, Su Doc just gritted his teeth and said, If you don't want to see this old woman die, chase out the Dan boy quickly. As he stated, Dan saw you and Gung Juk San are damn brats. Meanwhile, Juk San slaughtered an animal and suddenly, Dan saw you told him that he was hungry. But Juk San told him that so many complain about someone who's there for a free meal. If he was that hungry, he could come and help him fast. However, he called Nuna and Gung Mu A asked him what. Then he asked her, the person she was seeing, when she gonna introduce it to him. At that moment, Gung Mu A was shocked, and out of curiosity, she asked Juk San how in the world did he know that. Nonetheless, Dan saw you was startled and he was confused about it and he asked his sister if she was seeing someone. However, according to Gung Juk San, everyone in the village knows that though. Then he added and told Gung Mu A that a guy from the So clan who sells silk was the one she was seeing these days, and she asked her if they liked each other. Gung Mu A and Dan saw you were both shocked at that moment. Then Gung Mu A asked him who said that they liked each other. Out of curiosity, Juk San asked her if she was gonna marry that guy. But Gung Mu A told him to stop it. According to her, the truth is, she was seeing someone but, the place where he stays is far from their village, so they can't meet frequently. They haven't yet talked enough to know each other well, so everything is moving slowly. However, Gung Juk San told her not to worry. He will do his research on him and it seems he is hardworking and has a good reputation overall. Meanwhile, Dan saw you sighed. It's already sunset at that moment. Then Dan saw you was stunned and in his mind, Mue Nuna was already at a marriageable age. However, in the middle of the night, there was a home in the center of the forest. Then Mue and Juk San were both sleeping soundly and Dan saw you got an arrow. At this point, he was about to leave. And before leaving, he looked at Gung Mue. She was sleeping deeply and she's not even noticed Dan saw you at that moment. However, while looking at his sister, he was just stunned and said that he'd be right back. Then he immediately went out and he was about to leave. But suddenly, Dan Saw Yu was suddenly stopped. When Jayan San called him. Then he asked Dan Saw Yu where he was going in the middle of the night, and if he was going to the mountains at this hour. Nonetheless, Juk San was wondering and he asked Dan Saw Yu if it was because of Noonan's marriage. Then Dan Saw Yu told him yes and he asked him if he was going to sell the leather he collected soon. Juk San told him yes, and he's going to give it to Nuna as a gift when she gets married. However, Dan saw you crossed his arms and they continued talking. But out of curiosity, Dan saw you ask Juk San if Mue Nuna would get married, and what he would do. Then he told him that he always said that he would devote himself to the army. And Juk San told him that yes, he should. Juk San asked Dan Sa Yu how long he stayed in the house. Then he told him that when Nuna got married, and if he really did enter the army, Dan Sa Yu would be all alone. In addition to what he said, he told Dan Sa Yu that although Gung Sa Village is a place where people with the same family name as him live together. Then he asked him if don't he thought this is a place where people don't give a fuck about humanity. According to Juk San, he gets goosebumps just by having the same surname as them. But Dan saw you told him that he couldn't leave that place until he turned 20 and that's the promise he made to his late father. Then Juk San told him that his hands and feel all hear his persistence. Nonetheless, Dan saw you smiled and he told Juk San to stop coming up with useless ideas and to prepare for the army, he'd take good care of Mu A until he left the village. Then he added, 
and said that if those same surname people do something not good to Mu A, he can leave them to him because they were family. After hearing what Dan saw you said, Juk San just smirked at that moment. But suddenly, Juk San told him to wake up, and he asked Dan saw you if he thought he'd leave his precious sister to a good for nothing like him. Then he told him that he'd rather flee from the barracks. Dan saw you was mad and out of curiosity, he asked Juk San what he meant about good for nothing. Then Juk San told him that he meant it, he would like to thank you and Mu A for always being there whenever he was in trouble. However, Dan saw you told him all right, he must have a pure heart, and he added that he sly bastard. After hearing it, Juk San was almost angry. But Dan saw you told him that they would stop that useless conversation, and he'd go now. As he stated, for the wedding expenses, he'd dig up a wild ginseng even if it is winter. It might take a few days, but Juk San doesn't need to worry. Then Juk San told him that he was the second next to him when it came to hunting and strength, and why would he worry? It's surprising how much strength he has in that skinny body of him. But Dan saw you told him what was surprising about that. What's even more surprising is how he is also 16 years old like him. However, he told Juk San that they both should definitely make Mu A Nuna happy, and Dan saw you would make that happen. Then he took a step and he told Juk San that he'd really need to go now. Juk San told him that if there's an extra wild ginseng on his way, just give it to him. He'd been feeling empty these days. But Dan saw you just waved his hand and told Juk San not to cry over a big bear anymore. At this point, Dan saw you was walking in the village and Gung Su Dok suddenly called him and asked him where he was going at this hour. But Dan saw you just called him in his name. But Su Dok was mad and told him that didn't he tell him to call him He Young Nim. He's going to shut his mouth tonight, and he was nothing without Juk San. Nevertheless, Dan saw you looked at him and told him that he saw him like trash but he wanted him to call him He Young Nim. Then he asked Su Dok what was the letter sent by Hyang Ri about. According to him, when he saw her expressions, it seemed important. Suddenly, someone appeared and was mad, and she called Dan saw you a bastard. Then she asked him what does that have to do with him. Su Dok glanced at his back and he was shocked when he saw the village chief. Then she told Dan saw you that the letter was about the Gung family, it was none of his business and he must go where he was supposed to go. At that moment, Dan saw you just looked at them angrily and he was just speechless. Then instantaneously, he leaves. But Su Dok was shouting at him to stop right there. But the village chief told him to let him go. Then Su Dok was confused and he asked her why she was just watching that bastard Dan go. Nevertheless, this old lady just smiled and she told Su Dok to just wait, even if he don't step up, he'll leave on his own. She means he'd become a corpse anyway. If he comes to meet Hyang Ri. Meanwhile, the legs of horses appeared in the scene. Then under the night sky, someone was waving their flag. The top of it was a symbol of fire. Then next is a full moon and the other one is a crescent moon. At this point, a group of men holding the flags and fire. They were riding a horse and carriage. Then they were going to the top of the mountain. This man was shown and he was riding a horse and he looked dangerous with his scarf shaped like a dog wrapped around his neck and a scar was visible on his face. He was Yuan's special warrior. Meanwhile, at the top of the mountain, Dan saw Yu was shocked and he looked so confused at that moment. He thought it would take at least a hundred years. But he got this root of ginseng easily and it's not even one root, but two. Suddenly, Dan saw Yu was stunned. Then all of a sudden, he raised the roots while saying that he already found it. As expected, he has good luck. But later on, his bad luck came when the sunset appeared. And the area was so foggy at this point. However, he tapped the tree and said that he also had bad luck. According to him, he wants to go back quickly but, it's already sunset and foggy. Then he looked around and said that it was a bit tiring to go down in this state. But he was shocked when he saw a smoke. He went to the edge of the cliff and he was confused about who would do this deep in the mountains. Then Dan saw you was looking at it seriously. Nonetheless, he took a step, and he was hiding in the grass while watching someone who was in front of the burning fire. Then Dan saw you saw this old man. According to him, that old man doesn't seem to be lost. He doesn't look dangerous, but Dan saw you was confused about what is that feeling. 
He's definitely there but why does it feel like the old man was visible to his eyes but actually doesn't exist? As Dan saw you stated, he needs to be more cautious. But he was shocked when that old man said that of course, it would be normal at first to be wary of someone deep in the mountains. This old man said that he felt quite uncomfortable when Dan saw you kept sneaking on him even though he was unarmed, and he told Dan saw you to come out. And he asked Dan saw you if he wanted him to drag him there. Dan saw you was speechless and he just laughed at that moment. Then he suddenly appeared and he was raising his hands. Then Dan saw you said that it was getting dark and foggy, and he asked the old man if he could stay there until dawn. At this point, Dan saw you looked afraid and he was asking the old man again. Then this old man told him to sit. Meanwhile, it was still foggy at that moment. Dan saw you prepared a mushroom for them to eat. Then he told the old man to eat and they were in the middle of the mountains, so he couldn't treat him to a proper meal. But this old man just looked at it and he was just speechless. However, he still ate it. While Dan saw you was eating he was wondering why the old man didn't look hungry. Then this old man told him that no need to look at him weirdly, if he ate food in a hurry, that meant he ain't chewing it properly and his body wouldn't be able to absorb the nutrients. So instead, eat slowly. If he eats properly, even a small amount of food can give him enough strength to move his body. Suddenly, he glared at Dan Saw Yu and asked him who he was. Then he told the old man that he was Dan Saw Yu. He lives in Ganga village under Hong and Ryong. But out of curiosity, the old man asked him if he was talking about Wajayanman village. According to him, he heard only the Gung family can live there. It's surprising that he was a Dan. Nonetheless, Dan smiled and said that it was because of certain circumstances. Then this old man told him that it was interesting and he hid his fear with a smile. After hearing it, Dan saw you was startled and in his mind, it was like the old man was reading what was on his mind. According to him, the old man's eyes are strangely colored, making him scared. Suddenly, Dan saw you was just speechless. In an instant, he laughed and asked the old man where he was going. Then he told him that the place is high in the mountains, and ordinary people don't even dare to come there. At this point, this old man was just silent. Then he suddenly spoke and said that he was on his way to kill someone. Dan saw you was, shocked and he told the old man that even if he was sick of living, he still needed to live in the right way. But the old man just smirked and he told Dan saw you that he made him laugh. According to him, he doesn't do such things as giving up life. After hearing it, Dan saw you was stunned. But the old man countered and said that no, he didn't even deserve to kill himself. He's going to finish his long journey and Dan saw you was just speechless. Then this old man said that at the end of his journey, he was just going to wait until he died. He ate well, and it's been a long time since he ate something this good. Then this old man was suddenly silent. Dan saw you was just looking at him and he just sighed and he looked like he was worried about the old man. However, he lay down on the grass and put his arm beneath his head. Then he started to be curious about what was with the old man. He was confused if he was saying that he was going to die. According to him, he can't believe that he can talk about his own death so casually. The night has passed, and morning has come. Dan saw you stood up and walked ahead. Then suddenly, he stopped, and he looked at the old man. Then he left him one root of ginseng that he'd got. On his way, he was saying that he was going insane, and he must have gone mad. He was confused about what he had just done. According to him, he could buy hundreds of rice bags if that ginseng was really a hundred years old. Then he was worried why did he give it to that old man. But Dan saw you said that it was probably because he said he was going to die and it made people upset. Then Dan saw you was just silent at that moment. Nonetheless, he looked at the sky and he told himself to forget it. But he was confused about what he was going to do now. Then Dan saw you said that right, one ginseng root is enough. It seems like the other one wasn't meant for him. He took a step and said that he would now go home. Then, Dan saw you continued his journey home. Meanwhile, Dan saw you arrived at the village and he found no one was there. Dan saw you was shocked and he was confused about where is everyone. Suddenly, Su Doc was behind him, and he was clenching his fist at that moment. Instantaneously, 
Su Dok punched him and Dan saw you fell into the ground. Then Dan saw you clenched his fist and he was confused what was that all of a sudden. But unfortunately, Su Dok grabbed his head and crashed it to the ground. Then he told him that he damned Dan bastard, and he finally caught him. All of a sudden, the village chief and other villagers came. Then the old woman told Dan saw you that he was a stupid bastard, he wouldn't have been treated like this if he just left on his own. Then she told everyone in the village not to let Dan saw you get in the way and lock him up. While Dan saw you was groaning in pain he was confused and he asked them what the hell is this about? And what is it that he will get in the way of? Su Dok told him not to be surprised, that Hyang Ri was coming to their village. The capital sent him to manage their place. Then he asked Dan Sa Yu if he wasn't like a king. But Dan Sa Yu was asking Su Dok what does that have to do with him. Then the village chief told him that Hyang Ri was coming with an envoy from Yuan. And it is said that they can personally choose a princess to send to Yuan. So they're thinking of sending Gung Mu A. After hearing that, Dan Sa Yu was shocked. And he just screamed loudly. But he suddenly bites Su Dok's hand at that moment. Su Dok felt the pain and he was mad. All of a sudden, he was puzzled. Then Dan saw Yu hit his face with his elbow. At this point, Dan saw Yu was enraged and he wanted to escape. Instantaneously, Dan saw Yu got his weapon and put it an arrow. All of a sudden, he kicked Su Dok and he lands on him. Su Dok was shocked when he saw that Dan saw Yu was about to hit him with his arrow. Then Dan saw Yu told him that he thought that there was nothing he could do if they hated him without any reason. He thought it was because he had a different surname. He endured it when everyone called his father a coward and deserter. Because it was the truth that his father ran away anyway. Because it's true that they took his father and him in when they had nowhere to go. At this point, the village chief was shocked and she told the villagers to go and catch that damned Dan bastard. After hearing it, Dan saw you was startled. Then he told them not to come and he suddenly released his arrow. Luckily, the arrow just passed her by but this village chief was just shocked, and she just felt nervous. Then she gritted her teeth and she was more mad at that moment. Nonetheless, Dan saw you said that although his father ran away, he was grateful for what he'd learned from him. How to run away, how to chase, and how to hunt. He can definitely do those three things better than anyone in the village. At this point, Dan saw you was enraged and he told everyone that whoever came at him, beware. He'd pierce the head of whoever comes at him first. All of them were stunned and speechless. Then Dan saw you told the village chief that she'd always wanted him to leave Gunga village, and he'd do as she wished, with Mu A and Juk San. All of a sudden, Dan saw you immediately ran away. Then the village chief was shocked and she told him to stop right there. But they couldn't stop Dan saw you from escaping. Nonetheless, Su Dok was mad and he told the village chief that the Yuan envoy would arrive soon and if Mu A ran away, their village might get exterminated. Then the village chief told everyone to go after Dan Bastard. But suddenly, they were all shocked upon seeing Hyang Ri in their front. This man was just silent, and he was just looking at them. Meanwhile, Dan Sa Yu was heading to Mu A's home. Then Mu A heard Dan Sa Yu screaming and calling her name. Mu A was glad and she told Dan Sa Yu to come in and they were going to eat lunch soon. Then she asked him if he was going to eat too. But she was shocked when Dan Sa Yu just passed by her and told her that they didn't have time to eat, and she must prepare to leave now. Mu A noticed his face was bleeding and she asked him what happened. But Dan Sa Yu went straight to the room. He told Mu A to take just a few clothes. At this point, Mu A was confused and she asked Dan Sa Yu if he had encountered an animal in the mountains. Then she told him that he was bleeding a lot and she'd treat it first. But Dan Sa Yu told her that they didn't have time for that. In addition to him, he said that they have wild ginseng, so they can hang in there for a while. Then he asked Mu A where is Juk San. Mu A was startled and said that Juk San went to the mountains for wood and she was asking Dan Sa Yu what was going on. Then Dan saw Yu was just worried about Juk San. All of a sudden, he grabbed Mu A's hand and told her that he'd explain everything later, they had to go to Juk San first. Mu A was just shocked and she was telling Dan saw Yu to wait. But Dan saw Yu just pulled her and she dropped her basket full of vegetables. Suddenly, Dan saw Yu was shocked. 
when he saw that the enjoy from Yuan was already in the village. Dan saw Yu was confused about is it them, the bastard from the Yuan envoy. This man was just silent. Then suddenly he glared somewhere. And Dan saw Yu was shocked at that moment. He was confused about does their eyes met. He gritted his teeth and according to him, he can't lose Nuna to those bastards. Unfortunately, Hyang Ri noticed that they were heading to the mountain. Then he told the disciples to catch that woman. But this man was asking what about the guy. Hyang Ri said that he don't care if he kill him, but they must keep in mind that the woman may hold Yuan's fate someday. Then they'll have to bring her in without a scratch. In an instant, they followed Hyang Ri and they jumped off. The village chief and Su Dok were both shocked at the moment. When they saw the disciples above, Hyang Ri glared angrily. Then he remembered Dan saw you fighting Su Dok. According to him, he's a bastard who didn't learn martial arts. Hyang Ri suddenly smirked and said that Dan saw you become an interesting hunter. At this point, Dan saw you and Mu A ran as fast as they could. But suddenly, Dan saw you was shocked. When he saw that their enemies were heading to them, he immediately gets his weapon. And he attacked them. But they immediately dodge it. And this warrior split the arrow. After seeing it, Dan saw you was shocked. Then suddenly, their enemy grabbed his face. And he crashed Dan saw you into the ground. Mu A was shocked and she was calling Dan saw you at that moment. Suddenly, one of the warriors covered his mouth. Then Dan saw you was startled and he was worried about her. This man pointed his dagger at Dan saw you's eye and told him that he'd kill him in a heartbeat. But all of a sudden, Juk San came and he punched this man, and he flew away. Then this man was shocked to see his comrades were hit. But this warrior was all right and ready to fight. At that moment, Dan saw you was shocked when he saw Juk San. Then Juk San asked him who are those dangerous looking bastards. Dan saw you told about them and Juk San told him that he was saying that those bastards came there from Yuan, and Dan saw you told him yes. The letter he brought from Hyang Ri before was about offering Mu Wei as a princess. After hearing it, Juk San was shocked. Then Dan saw you suggested that first of all, they take Mu Wei to the Juk Rang Bong Peak. It would be hard for them to keep up there. However, the man behind Mu A laughed and he told his companion that he looked like he was having a hard time and he asked him if he wanted help. But his companion just told him to be quiet. Then this man was mad and he was just speechless. Suddenly, he smirked and said that bastards were worrying on the inside. All of a sudden, this warrior was heading to them and told them not to even think about having a nice death. Juk San was shocked at that moment. Then he gritted his teeth and asked them no matter how desperate they were. How can they think of selling a family member out to become a princess? He added and said that he would never send Nuna to those barbarians. All of a sudden, Juk San withdraws his axe and remove the wood at his back. Then suddenly, he throws it to the enemy. This man gritted his teeth and he was thrilled to fight Juk San and said, What a spirited young man. All of a sudden, the warrior swung his dagger and said that he don't have enough time to waste on him. Then he told them to die both of them. Juk San stared angrily at the warrior. Then luckily, he blocked the attack of the enemy. Juk San told him that he said he'd kill both of them, do it if he can. Then this warrior said that he couldn't and he was confused about how can Juk San be so strong. The warrior twisted his weapon on Juk San's neck, and he was just puzzled. Suddenly, Dan saw Yu stepped on his shoulder. Then he jumped off, and his weapon was pointing at the warrior. In an instant, he released his arrow going to the opponent. This man was shocked, and he immediately split it and said that this doesn't make sense. Juk San was mad and he clenched his fist. Then suddenly, he punched the warrior's stomach, and this man was groaning in pain. Because of that force, the warrior was flown away. Then he bumped into a tree, and this man was just startled. Instantaneously, he saw an arrow that was near to him. Luckily, he managed to dodge the arrow. At this point, he looked too frightened, and the arrow was pierced on the tree. But unfortunately, this warrior was hit in his leg and he was speechless at that moment. His companion laughed and said that those kids were surprising. Suddenly, Hyang Ri came and told his disciple that he must be kidding him, his laughter echoed throughout the game of Plateau. And it seems like they're enjoying the situation. However, Dan saw Yu told Juk San that it was the bastard the envoy from Yuan, 
and Juk San was just shocked at that moment. Then Hyang Ri told them that it's been a while since he ordered them to come and get Niue, but nothing happened till now. He can't imagine that Yuan's elite warriors are struggling against some youngsters from Goryeo. That's all for today, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you wish to have another manhwa recap like this, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel so you will be updated for more content like this. Until next time.